We're coming to you from the home of the late Carlos Lazama, where we are attending a carnival brunch put together by the CLAC-C organization. CLAC-C stands for Carlos Lazama Archives and Caribbean Cultural Center. Inside, we have historical documents and photographs of the West Indian American Day Association throughout the years. The atmosphere at the home of the late Carlos Lazama was filled with history, culture, and tradition. As one walked through the door, you felt at home with family and friends. As we sat outside in the backyard with the sun shining proudly on us and the cool breeze blowing freely, everyone was enjoying themselves and each other's company, as well as the great food being served up straight from the kitchen. Can you tell us what you think about the event? Oh, it's great. And what made you come out today? Well, I live in the neighborhood and I've known Mr. Lazama for years. So, you know, you were invited to come over. So. I'm just so excited today because so much was go is going on, getting ready for Labor Day and getting the community excited. Just over at the church at St. Gregory's, we were celebrating the 46th anniversary, anniversary of Trinidad and Tobago independence. Herman Hall, publisher of Everybody's Magazine and lifelong member of the Carnival Association, gave us a tour of the Cultural Center. This is Lord Kitchener in 1971 or 1972 at the Brooklyn Museum and we are pronging Lord Baker. He was the Calypso King because in those days the West Indian American Day Carnival Association actually had a Calypso Mono competition and Baker won the crown that year. Lord Baker, he lived in Washington in those days. Yeah, was taken by the director of culture, this um, Errol Payne. And we should also say that in Trinidad and Tobago, Errol Payne was the first masquerader to be honored on a Trinidad and Tobago postage stamp. That was way back in the late 60s. Okay. And this is his design for the bicentennial or the 200th birthday of the United States. So if you, look, if you look at it well, we have the logo, the bicentennial logo of 1976 for the 200 years, and then the association logo here designed by Payne. But that was in celebration of the 200th anniversary of the United States. But this mask here, this is Louis. He now works, I think, either at Kings County Hospital or Down State Hospital. Blue pots and pan. Okay. Right, when he came with him, Caterpillar. That is again is in the early 70s. Galui now no longer make masks, but he works either at Down State or Kings County Hospital. And uh, yeah, that was Louis again. This actual man came direct from the Virgin Islands. They used to come every year. And this band would have been presented, brought here either by Panam or by American Airlines. Yeah. And this is one of the very early artic positive articles we got from the Daily News with, with a young Jean Perry. She was one of the early black writers at the Daily News. Yeah. So this is Shirley Chisholm here. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And this is Paul O'Dwyer the city council president, and frankly with you, Paul O'Dwyer is the person who started what we now have, the kickoff reception at, at um, Gracie, Gracie Mansion. Mansion. Sure. It was really Paul O'Dwyer who started it. Ken Williams, the veteran radio broadcaster, but most important, this is Hal Jackson, Out, sure. and you listen to Hal Jackson on WBLS Sunday sure. Classics. But Hal Jackson is the man who made WLIB Caribbean. And here is the assemblyman. His name is Fortune. He was one of the early um, black politicians right here in, um, in Bed-Stuy right here. His office was a Nostron. I think his name was Thomas Fortune. Okay. And he died now. But he, he, again, he used to secure the assembly and the senate to pass the resolution. And this is um, Percy Sutton, sure. right? This is Sadie Fellow again. Okay. The, the former councilwoman, and then um, the governor's father right here. Patterson. Basil Patterson. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. For Shirley Chisholm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna turn governor Carey, sure. the former governor. Mayor Koch. Mm -hmm. I think this gentleman, if I'm not mistaken, used to come from the USVI or somewhere down there. But this is Desmond Warrior like Young, is, and yeah, of course, yes. Yeah. 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 And you see, what we, would, the pro, we needed a proclamation for legitimacy. Because one has to remember that we used to have to clean Eastern Parkway. It's kind, it's kind of hard to believe that. And listen, at 8 o'clock, the, the Tuesday morning, we used to physically 
It used to take us five days. We used to finish Clean Eastern Parkway by Friday morning. But then this, the Department of Sanitation would pick it up. But we had to actually to pick up the bottles. Of course, the most hurtful thing about it in those days is when guys come from work, they will stop off in their corners and say, boy, we had a nice time yesterday. But none will come out and help us. So when we got some of those pictures in the New York Times, we just saw over there on the Daily News, it was Ken Chandler's photo. Because in those days, when we try our put, put is me basically was doing it, they, they were afraid to send the white folks out to bed -style. It was still the early 70s, and it was still. So we said, no, you don't have to send out your white photographer. We have quality photographers that could do the job. And Ken Chandler was a professional photographer. So then after that, New York Magazine, and New York, and they used to buy it from Ken. And Ken died, unfortunately, covering Trinidad Carnival. Wow. Right, and he died, yeah, and yeah. But he was a lifelong member of the association. And this is a familiar picture. We have, um, of course, on your left hand side, the first person. Does anyone recognize that? I don't, oh, no. I, we don't want nobody to know. That. <laughs> don't know. I'm, sorry. I'm, one, I'm, one, I'm wondering who is that person. Journalist, you think? <laughs> okay. And there, this is Marjorie, Polly Philip, Mrs. Ramos. I just keep forgetting his name, but he, he was Mr. Ramos' friend. He was a member. As a matter of fact, he. No, he was, listen, that man almost got mad when we had reggae at, the, at the, the museum for the first night. Yeah, he's from Trinidad and he was kind of a novelty guy, very nice man, but he was mad when we brought reggae. No, 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 not him. But I will give you all the names because I have all the names. This one here we're talking about. Yeah. All right. Well, this is Harley James. Howard, we all know Howard. This gentleman I cannot. Oh, the, oh, yeah, Jane, you're talking about him. Yeah, this is Douglas. Yeah, he's a, he was attorney. We tried to get him. He he volunteered to become the attorney for the association, and he wasn't tough enough. So, yeah, so he quit after a time. But he was yeah, that's Douglas. Yeah, yeah. Why did it take tough people? Huh? Why did it take tough people? She's begging. Why it took tough people? Tough people to work for the organization. No, no. It, it, well, they, they had to be brave to, to take what it goes. It was not formal. The, the members of the session had their jobs. So you had to be prepared to come here at 10, 11, 12, 1, 2 in the morning to meetings, regardless of where you work, you follow. Right? And this is Holly with Ramos, as I said, Prince. And this is Milton Jones' wife. Right? Rowan Edda. This is Milton right here in the back. We're so blessed to still have a historian amongst us <laughs> who was able to recount the journey uh, that Carlos Lazama traveled with the members of WIACA that lead us to today, this wonderful opening of a modest yet giant enormous step for Claxi. Thank you. You could see from the looks on their face that they are reminiscing on the early days of Carnival in New York. Listening to tunes from The Mighty Sparrow, Shadow, Lord Kitchener, Lord Nelson, and other Calypsonians. What do you think these organizations meant to Carlos Lazama, and what do you think it means to the people and community today? Well, in terms of the West Indian American Day, I would say that it was his love of culture that drove him. He loved carnival and he also loved seeing people enjoy themselves along Eastern Parkway. He um, wanted to see people come together under the banner of spirit of carnival and of culture. And I'm going to add to that by saying that his love of people, Caribbean people, people in general and culture was the impetus for this cultural center. This cultural center is built on that love by embracing culture, highlighting culture, highlighting the work of Carlos Lazama and bringing together people to celebrate culture. Carlos Lazama Archives and Caribbean Cultural Center is located at 1028 St. John's Place between Kingston and Brooklyn Avenues. This building will be the center of Caribbean carnival culture in North America. For more information, please log on to www.claccc.org. Please support Carlos and his legacy. This is Kamla for Zinc TV's New York Links.